Okay, good morning, everybody. Hope everybody is well. Hope everybody is doing great. We are in what we'd call the American holiday season. I don't know. My Canadians, let me know about the Thanksgiving. I think we did this last year. I don't remember. But in America, we are now into the world of Thanksgiving, which now moves into the holidays of December, culminating with the new year. And I, I love this time because the whole world has this, what we call, I don't, I don't call it, but what it, what's called holiday cheer. People are a little happier. People are a little living a little more meaningfully. They're thinking of their families. They're thinking of life, a little more introspection, a little more giving. For those who are anywhere near Manhattan, Salvation Army has on every single block people with bells and music and people are just giving charity. And I think that's a good thing in life. Like I think when you, at least I know from the American scene, from the little that I know of it, mostly what I know is I would say closer to the corporate American scene than the American scene. There's a certain feeling of depth that takes place now. People are leaving earlier to go home, to do things, to host meals, to have people, to be together. People are wrapping up the year and trying to focus on depth. People are introspecting a little bit more. And all that depth, all that work, I think leads to a deeper sense of happiness. And so, this is the time for us to grow. If there's ever a time, it's now. Talking about, maybe we'll talk about Thanksgiving tomorrow. I don't know if we have a show tomorrow. I got to check with the team. But if we do, we'll talk about Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is one of the most misunderstood holidays. It's actually, by the way, I don't want to go too, too far into it, but it's actually a holiday that was supposed to be Thanksgiving to God. Right? The pilgrims gave thanks to God for being alive. We'll talk about it another time. All right, let's get back to what we're doing. Maybe tomorrow we'll do a little bit on Thanksgiving. Because Thanksgiving is a day for everybody, but not for now. Yesterday we were talking about this idea of being unfamiliar, right? Um, how some of the kids that are successful, and I mean, again, let's just define my terms. You don't have to be wealthy to be successful in my world. There are a lot of wealthy people that are unsuccessful, to be honest. And a lot of wealthy people that are successful. But I'm not, I'm not defining success by bank account. Talk about success, about like life. Well-adjusted. Contributing. Healthy. Growing. Right? You can be struggling, but growing. And you're successful. Like I said, I find people that have overcome drugs and alcohol to be, to be heroes. On the outside, they may not think I'm successful because I've just overcome something negative, but that, I think that's successful. I do. Like, you may have a parent who spends most of their time in the house, so the world may not think that's very successful. I think that's very successful. You're blessed with children and you are raising them. That's great. Like, success is not defined by a societal trophy. And you find people that when they were growing up, the structures in, that they were placed in was causing them failure, tension, um, hopelessness. And parents are struggling what to do with their kids that are not making it in the world that they started in because some kids can't make it in a world in which there's very specific things to do and very specific people to spend time with in a very specific building and off you go for the beginning of your life. And one of the reasons why these kids are so successful, I find, or many of them are, if they've got the right support, meaning if nobody along the way said, oh, you can't make it in 11th grade math, what's gonna be with your life? or you're not, you, you didn't make the team, or you didn't, you don't have this group, parents do that sometimes. 
They overthink their children. They want their kids to be in this circle of friends or in this type of school. And it's all healthy and good and wonderful, but it's sometimes really detrimental. But these kids, and this may be you, these kids never get the feeling of familiar because they grow up in a world that's unfamiliar. Sometimes this happens even in a home where they don't feel familiar even in their own home. It's more complicated. But what happens is that they get used to the feeling that unfamiliar is okay. Or as they say in the Navy SEALs, I'm only comfortable when I'm uncomfortable. Right? I think they said that in the SEALs. I was never in the SEALs, but that's what I've been that's what I read. So if you if you're in the SEALs and you never heard that, they probably don't say that in the SEALs. But allow me to just believe that. It's, it makes it much better for me. But either way, I've read that something connected to a commando. You're only comfortable in things that are uncomfortable. Because when you're in something uncomfortable, you know that you're not going to stay stagnant. I was reading in this pamphlet that I get every weekend from a rabbi named Rabbi Biederman that if you look at the heart, you'll see that a healthy heart goes up and down, up and down, up and down. God forbid if a heart flatlines, that's unhealthy. Because when you're in a place of discomfort, the reason why it's uncomfortable is because you're not sure if I'm going to go up or I'm going to go down. So the, the fear of down, of failure, of loss, of vulnerability, overwhelms us. And so sometimes we opt to flatline, just to keep it fine, as opposed to walking into the discomfort and having a shot at going up. But what I want to sort of focus on here is that so many times the reason why we're not achieving things and we're not growing in things is because we're cutting it off from ourselves. Because the place of that growth is in discomfort. The place of that growth is in vulnerability. It's only when we go to that place of vulnerability. It's only when we open up the doors that are uncomfortable to open up. It's only when we walk into the environments that I feel uncomfortable in. It's only there that the greatness is. Because many times that's where God places it. Because that's how we earn it. We earn it by working for it. We can't be a gift all the time. And so it's only in those places that are uncomfortable and that are unfamiliar that I, in, I have a chance at exponential growth. And so when I go into my day and I allow my brain to look for patterns that feel familiar, then I am cutting myself off from the areas that I have the most to gain. And that's why we go round and round for most of our lives. It's not because we can't, and it's not because we don't have the opportunities. Most of us, if not all of us, have opportunities for growth all the time. They're micro growth, you don't hit the lottery, but they're packaged in things that are unfamiliar. They're packaged in challenges that gives us the risk of going down. They're packaged, they're packaged in statements that are making us look vulnerable. They're packaged in rooms that I don't know if I can walk into and feel comfortable. In opportunities that I haven't done yet. They're packaged in that which is unfamiliar. And the challenge that we go through on a daily basis, if we're really paying attention to our minds, the challenge is, am I going to look for the familiar 
or am I going to look for the unfamiliar? Now, I'm, my brain is going to always move me towards familiar. My default setting is, an unf is, is unfamiliar. I'm always going to want to take the same route to work. I'm always going to do the same thing in the morning. I'm always going to want to talk to the same people. This is why, by the way, between me and you, since we're close, I've really, over the past, I don't know, five years or three years, lessened my exposure to politics. Honestly. Really lessened it. It's because every time I walked into a room to talk to anybody about anything, it was always the same group of people, wherever it was, whatever side of the aisle, saying the same stuff to each other that they just all heard from some source that was speaking to them. It was constant little like, you know, chambers of the similar thought. So it got to a point where I'm like, I don't know if anyone even thought this through. Sometimes I speak to someone who's thoughtful about things, but usually if you want to pay attention, it's not political. Now, this is a distinction that I, at least I have found, and maybe you have or you haven't. Usually it's either a utility, like it's utilitarian, which is it's very practical, usually, or it's policy. This is what I feel about this because it's based on this following policy. It's almost agnostic to who's in charge. But the minute you see, you can hear it, listen for it. Listen for it. It happens always. People regurgitating the same thing to the people that they know will like to hear it. So that everyone sort of ping pongs the same ideas back and forth to each other. And the minute somebody says something that's different, it's like uncomfortable. So you, you don't know if, like, if you, are we, are we, are we talking about anything real or is it just, we're just making each other feel good? I feel uncomfortable being uncomfortable. This is a big, in, this is a big issue. I was talking yesterday to a colleague about DEI programs. DEI stands for diversity. Uh, quality and inclusion, I think, but def definitely diversity and inclusion. And it's a big challenge with a lot of companies now because they don't know how to do it. And this guy had such a great idea. He said, why don't you just put people of different backgrounds in the room? Like, why do, why do I get, why do you, get, why are you going to lecture somebody? Why don't you take somebody of two different backgrounds, two different races, two different religions in the same company? Right? If you're working in a company that's diverse and you want to increase diversity, why don't you just two, put two people across the room and have them have a conversation about their lives? Because it's uncomfortable. That's why they don't do it. It's easy to hear a lecture about someone else's life and sit there and like you know pay, pay attention. But to sit across the table someone that you don't know, who doesn't look like you, who doesn't sound like you, who doesn't believe in what you believe in, and actually engage. It's uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. It happens all the time. It happens in, in, in groups of people in the same community. It's uncomfortable to hear your perspective. It's uncomfortable to be wrong. Because I always thought this. It's uncomfortable, especially if you like to be in control. For my type A's, holy cow. For everyone, it's uncomfortable. For my type A's out there, it's beyond uncomfortable. It's scary because not only is it uncomfortable, the type A's love to be in control of everything, including what's in your brain. And if you're wrong about something, man, that's big. That's existential. But that's growth. I'm not an expert at this at all. I'm struggling like you're struggling. I like to think that I'm always right. But I'm not. And it's hard to admit that, but that's life. I know a lot less than I think I know. And the hard part is not that. The hard part is not what I don't know. The hard part is thinking I know things that I don't know. That's the hard part in life for me and for you. Is being able for us to say, 
much of this world that's around me, I don't really know well. And so I'm kind of limiting myself when I stick in the things that are familiar because there's a world out there. That kid is a world that I don't really know, even if I gave birth to them. That parent is a world I don't know, even if I was given, they gave birth to me. I don't know a lot about my own religion. I think I do, but I really don't. Like really, I don't. And I don't, I can't blame anybody anymore, I just don't. I don't know a lot about someone else's life. I don't know a lot about the stuff that I gotta need to become successful in life. This embracing, this discomfort of how little we know is scary, but it's totally liberating because then the world becomes your oyster. And you stop trying to defend what you know and you start learning. You get to be three again. And when you get to be three, that's it. That's game over. A child doesn't think he knows everything. So that's why he learns everything. The adult's too scared to admit that. But once you admit it, once we're good with it, then I need unfamiliar. We need discomfort. Because that's the only place we're going to get. I need to be in a place that I don't know. Because if I know it, I haven't really grown. Think about that. All right, let's call it. Let's think about this today. Well, I don't know, but we'll, we'll, we'll let you know about tomorrow's show. Just check out the, uh, the notes. If you're not on our WhatsApp chats, just jump onto one of the WhatsApp chats. You can probably find it. Um, if you're not on a WhatsApp chat and you can't get, just you can email me, charlie at charlieharari.com. Let's think about this today. Can I be comfortable only in things that are uncomfortable? Because that's where my growth is. All right, have an amazing day. And with God's help, I cannot wait to see you again, hopefully tomorrow.